believe Anita, a teacher, was transferred to a new school in Bengaluru. It was her first day on the campus, with her first class to be taken for class five students. She looked like a very kind person, which was far from reality. Not that she was a bad teacher. She was very efficient with her teaching, but she lacked patience. Her fury knew no boundaries if a student failed to answer her questions. Upon reaching the class, she asked a student to introduce herself. But the girl stayed silent. Anita asked her repeatedly, but the girl didn't respond. With each time she asked, Anita's tone rose finally releasing her anger in the form of a wooden ruler hitting the girl. Just then, another girl sitting next to her named Ananya rose to say something, but Anita told her, talk only when you were asked to. This is my class, and I will decide the rules. Stay silent and sit down on your chair. Ananya had no option left but to sit down with her head down in embarrassment. Anita continued unleashing her anger on the girl until her ego pacified her, and she wrote a note in her diary demanding her parents be present in school tomorrow. Anita was not a cruel person at heart, but it was just her way of managing students. She felt that if her students were punished for not answering the question, they would study harder and give extra attention in class. This way, her students always scored better. That was one of the reasons she was liked by everyone in her previous school. Her results were outstanding. The very next morning, Anita was called to the principal's office. Excited, she entered the office expecting appreciation for the last day's deeds. Upon entering, she watched the girl standing with her father and looked at the principal eagerly. The principal nodded his head in anger and shouted at her, saying, Anita, what have you done on your first day? Don't think you will be appreciated for how you treat students. If students don't answer your questions, you must teach them again. You have no right to punish the children. If you think they are not disciplined, you can talk to them but not punish them, not in my school. Anita fumbled and said, But sir, she would only answer if she is punished. I asked her repeatedly to introduce herself, but she didn't speak a word. Instead, she stood still, looking straight at my face. How would she sustain herself in a highly competitive world if she can't even introduce herself? I am sorry, sir but I don't think I did anything wrong. The principal rose from his seat and continued, For your information, Priya is not only the topper in her class, but she has brought so many laurels to our school. So don't tell me about her competency. I have never seen a student as smart and talented as her. Just apologize to Priya and her father and wait outside. Anita's eyes swelled with tears as she said sorry to Priya and her father before leaving the room. In her mind, she decided to give Priya a tough time. She thought, I will put a tough question paper this time, and then let me see how she passes. The principal will have to take back his words for sure. The principal called her in after Priya and her father left. 
He told her about the mistake she had made. He said, Anita, Priya is an excellent student. Whether it is academics or co-curricular, she is extremely talented, but she has a problem. Anita raised her eyes as the principal continued, she cannot speak by birth. When Ananya wanted to tell you about it, you didn't allow that. Instead, you asked her to stay silent. How could a child with no ability to speak introduce herself? Listening to Priya's story, Anita realized her mistake and apologized to the principal before leaving the room. But she was not going to give any special treatment to Priya. Anita decided to treat Priya as she would treat any of her students. Anita would ask questions to Priya every day, with the only change that Priya had to write down her answer on the board. Not only Priya but she also asked everyone to explain the answer using the board. Anita noticed that Priya had a lot of pain in her heart. She had heard from other teachers that Priya's father was very supportive, but Priya kept her thoughts to herself. Anita never saw Priya share her pain with anyone. Priya would mostly keep to herself. She would hardly mingle with anyone in the class. That was the reason it surprised Anita when Priya left a note for her on the table before she entered the classroom. Anita read the note, tore it, and threw it into the dustbin. She took her class as she would take on ordinary days and left during the break. Anita had noticed that Priya spent her recess time in the music room and decided to go meet her there. Priya stopped playing the piano as she saw Anita walking in. Anita asked, Do you want to know why I threw that paper in the dustbin? Priya sighs, Yes. Anita responded, Because I like you a lot. My way of dealing with students may be different, but it doesn't mean that I hate them. I like all my students, and I wish all of them well. There is one thing in that letter which I didn't like. How can someone hate our charming and intelligent Priya? Priya grabbed a notebook from her bag and wrote, Everyone shows sympathy towards me because I can't speak and I don't have a mother. Sometimes I feel that my mother left me and went to God because I can't speak. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.